Now let us look at an example of deferred tax liabilities and assets. Let's assume that we have some asset base which is the property plant and equipment and that is worth $1200 and the useful life of this asset is let's say four years. So we have an asset which is worth $1200 and its useful life is four years. Earlier we had seen there were two methods of depreciation which we have looked at. One was the straight line method and the second one was the accelerated depreciation method. So let's look at first straight line method of depreciation. So in this case if there are four years what will be the overall flow of depreciation? Year one, year two, year three and year four. The depreciation amount will be same because this is straight line method of depreciation. So here the depreciation expense would come out to be 1200 divided by 4. So please note that I am assuming that salvage value is 0. The depreciation for the straight line method will be same for all the years. So this will be 300 for all the years, year 1, year 2, year 3 and year 4. Now we had also looked at another method of depreciation and we had classified that as accelerated depreciation method and in accelerated method we saw in specific double declining method of depreciation and uh, the regular formula here was that 2 divided by your useful life multiplied by your remaining book value. So this was the formula we had earlier seen for uh, the double declining method we'll apply the same formula and uh, calculate the depreciation expense for all the years year 1 year 2 year 3 and year 4 so we had earlier seen that we may actually build a table like this year 1 which consists of year 1 year 2 year 3 and year 4 in a vertical format and it starts with the beginning balance so beginning amount and then we had the depreciation and then the ending balance so here we have the beginning balance as 1200 dollars the depreciation expense using this formula would come out to be 2 divided by your useful life is 4 years and multiplied by the remaining book value. The remaining book value as of now is 1200. So it comes out that the depreciation expense for year 1 is 600. And what will be the ending book value? The ending book value will be beginning book value minus the depreciation during that year that comes out to be 600 here. Now let's look at year 2 depreciation for which we will require the remaining book value. So ending book value here will become equal to the beginning book value for the next year. So we will link this up and applying the same formula 2 divided by 4 that is the useful life multiplied by 600 will be the depreciation expense and the ending balance will come out to be 600 minus 300 okay now let's look at the third year the beginning balance will be the ending balance of the previous year the depreciation expense will come out to be 150 so your ending balance is now 150 now the last year is basically beginning balance is 150 as we have seen we may not apply this formula here which leads to the 75 uh, depreciation expense because this asset should depreciate fully by the end of four years. So if we just do a sum total here, we will note that this sum total comes out to be 1125 and not 1200. So in the last year, instead of 75, we will directly pull in 150 and the ending book value so that it will be zero. So this is how the depreciation expense we had earlier calculated using the double declining method. So we have two things. This is using the straight line and let us populate the double declining expenses as well. Depreciation expense. It is 600, 300, 150 and 150. This is using the double declining method of depreciation. So what we will now do next is that having understood two different expenses for these years let us kind of draw an income statement in fact we'll draw two income statement 
one the income statement for the shareholders and second the income statement for the tax authorities now when we talk about the income statement from the tax authorities we have a choice that we can use either the straight line method or we can look at the double declining method of depreciation so here we will use double declining method of depreciation to record the depreciation expense and while we are looking at the shareholders we'll talk about the straight line method of depreciation okay so we are going to draw two income statement one which is shareholders second which is the tax authorities so let me start doing that and for this I'll directly start from EBITDA because that's the amount we will assume that is constant for both the income statement for tax authorities as well as for the shareholders so here let's say these are the four years and EBITDA let's say it starts with thousand fifteen hundred two thousand and two five zero zero so after this earnings before interest taxes depreciation and amortization then comes the depreciation term and amortization term so let's assume that the depreciation and amortization is equal to 300 and since we are using straight line method we'll use take this term 300 and it will remain the same for all the future years because this is straight line method what we get here is the earnings before interest and taxes after reducing the depreciation and amortization expense so let me do that 1000 minus 300 that is 700 for year one and I'll copy and paste this formula it comes out to be 1200 for year two 1700 for year three and 2200 for year four okay then let's assume that the interest expense which is constant for both uh, the income statement for shareholders as well as tax authorities we'll assume that this is 200 and let's assume that this is fairly constant throughout these four years okay so what we get is the EBT earnings before taxes and we also know that this is called as accounting profit okay this is the pre-tax income and this is also called as accounting profit so here the accounting profit comes out to be for year one this is 700 minus 200 so this is 500 and for the other years it comes out to be 1000 1500 and 2000 respectively now uh, on this EBT or the accounting profit will pay taxes so that let's assume that this is at the rate of 40 percent and um, this will come out to be 500 into 40 percent this is equal to 200 here and for the remaining years 400 600 and 800 so what we get is the net income that is 300 600 900 and 1200 respectively so this was the income statement that was on the basis of straight line method of depreciation okay now let's look at the tax authority based income statement and the only change that we will assume here would be the change in the depreciation and amortization expense so let me copy this whole block I'll copy this block here and what I'll do is I'll remove this depreciation and amortization expense and I will use the depreciation method which is the double declining method so I link this cells with the respective depreciation of double declining method it was 600 in the year 1 200 in year 2 150 and 150 in year 3 and 4 respectively so I'll put that across and since these are formulas what we note here is that the taxes come out to be 80 400 660 and 860 respectively and the net income is 120 600 990 and 1290 respectively now I would like you to closely look at what is the tax amount due to the income statement from the shareholders and income statement for the tax authorities now look at these numbers closely you'll find that 
here you have reported that you are going to pay higher amount but you have paid a lesser amount to the tax authorities likewise here in this case this number is same in this case here this number is smaller than what you have actually paid to the tax authorities and here again the number is smaller as compared to what you have actually paid to the tax authorities so let us now look at what will be the associated deferred tax liabilities and how much are we going to report on the balance sheet 